I get asked a lot, does atrial fibrillation shorten my life or does atrial fibrillation lead to heart failure? So the answer to both of those questions is maybe. It's a little bit more complicated. So let's take each of these topics one by one. First off, does atrial fibrillation lead to heart failure? Well, there is a condition known as congestive heart failure. And it's important to understand what this really means. It's not as simple as, oh, my heart's failing, I'm going to die. That's not exactly what we mean when we say you have congestive heart failure. When we say you have congestive heart failure, this is a condition where your heart isn't pumping effectively. So remember, your heart is a big pump. It's circulating blood. Think of your heart almost like a simplistic mechanical system. So if you say the pump's right in the middle and there's sort of an in pipe and an out pipe, and let's just say that the water is circulated kind of in a big circle. So the pump is circulating the water in a big system, in pipe, out pipe, in a big system, and your pump's right in the middle. That's kind of how your heart sort of works in your body. It pumps the blood out to the rest of your organs and then kind of returns back to get more oxygen and blood flow and then keeps in a big circle. So if you have a typical pump, and let's say the pump was failing, either because the pump was getting weaker, damaged and weaker, or it was very stiff, meaning it pushes out all the blood that it fills up with, but it's not filling properly. So it's filling less, it pumps out less, or it fills properly and it pumps out less because it's weak, either weak or stiffness. So if the pump was failing and it was unable to keep up with the circulation of the flow of the fluid because it's either stiff and can't fill up properly and isn't pumping enough uh, blood with each beat or it's filling up properly, but it's pumping less with each beat, then you would have less flow of fluid or water going through the out pipe and more of it would back up on the in pipe. And eventually this failing system, this failing pump, the pressures in the in pipe would get so high that eventually they could burst the pipes. And then that's where you say, okay, we gotta, we gotta change out this pump. Well, in your body, your heart is the main pump in the middle and you have blood vessels that kind of circulate the blood. The blood is uh, circular around in a big circle. Now you have the out pipe and the in pipe. Uh, those are the blood vessels. Now the blood vessels are stretchy. They're not like mechanical metal pipes. And so therefore, if your heart was failing to keep up with the circulation, less blood was being pumped in the out pipe and more was backing up in the in pipe, the pressures will get higher and higher and higher, but they won't burst your blood vessel because your blood vessels are stretchy. But what will happen is water from the bloodstream, what we call plasma, actually seeps out of the blood vessel from the high pressures. And guess what? Your lungs sit right next to your heart. And so if fluid from the bloodstream or plasma water from the bloodstream seeps into the air spaces of your lungs, well, your lungs are meant for air and not for fluid. And so therefore you would have trouble breathing. And because it's kind of a big circle, if the pressures get very high all the way down the in pipe, they could cause a little bit of a fluid to leak into your abdomen or your legs. And then that's why you get swelling. So this is when we say you are in congestive heart failure. Then you get hospitalized and get put on a bunch of water medications to pee up like a storm. And what happens is you take fluid from the bloodstream and you make it urine. Your kidneys make it into urine and get it out of your system. So now the pipes are underfilled. Your blood vessels are underfilled because you made a bunch of urine. And your body actually has the amazing ability to reabsorb fluid, excess fluid that's leaked out of the system into the lungs or the legs or the abdomen back into the pipes to make up for that lost fluid. And then now you're technically not in congestive heart failure. But anybody who has a weak heart or a stiff heart knows that if they're not careful with how much they drink in, they could add more fluid into the pipes again, overload their weak or stiff heart, and go back into congestive heart failure. So this is a known condition. Now, sometimes people will say, oh, well, if I'm in atrial fibrillation, that's definitely gonna lead to heart failure. Not necessarily. If you have an underlying weak or stiff heart, then yes, if you have a problem with atrial fibrillation, which remember makes your heart go fast, then your weak or stiff heart probably isn't gonna like going faster at a faster speed. And so it is more likely to pump less efficiently and you may be more likely to be triggered into or exacerbated into this condition of congestive heart failure. But if you don't have an underlying stiff or weak heart and your heart's just going a little bit faster because of AFib, why would you develop congestive heart failure. 
you wouldn't. So it's not like a sure thing. Oh, I'm in atrial fibrillation, even though it's rate controlled, my heart's just gonna become weak or it's gonna become stiff or it's gonna just start pumping poorly and fluid's gonna build up in my legs or lungs. No, that's absolutely incorrect. If you have an underlying condition and you go into atrial fibrillation and your heart rates aren't well controlled, yes, it can certainly exacerbate these underlying conditions of the weak heart or the stiff heart. But if you have a normal strength heart, then it probably won't. And so the answer to that question is atrial fibrillation does not definitely lead to congestive heart failure, but it can if you have the underlying uh, predisposition to it. So that's number one. Number two, sometimes people will say, okay, but doesn't my heart beat less efficiently in AFib? I mean, the top part of my heart, the atria, are going at very fast speeds. And the good news is the atria, the top part of the heart where the AFib cells are in, they're not the part that pumps the blood out of your heart. It's actually the bottom chambers of your heart, the two ventricles, the right and left ventricles. They're what pumps the blood out of your heart. The top chambers, the atria, they're like primer pumps. They just kind of help push the blood to the bottom chambers so the bottom chambers can pump them out. And so therefore, yes, when you are in atrial fibrillation, not only is the bottom chambers, the ventricles going at a faster speed, but the top chambers aren't pushing the blood down to the bottom quite as efficiently. So yes, your heart rates are fast and your heart is a little bit less efficient. But once again, if you have an underlying problem with a weak or stiff heart, then making it faster or less efficient will likely trigger at some point congestive heart failure. But if you don't have a weak heart or a stiff heart, then having your heart go at a little bit faster speed or being a little bit less efficient isn't necessarily going to cause you to develop a weak or stiff heart and isn't necessarily going to cause you to go into congestive heart failure. I have plenty of patients who've progressed to the point where they're 100% in AFib and will be that way for the rest of their life, but their heart strength is good, their heart is not stiff or weak, and their heart rates are controlled enough that they do fine and they will live just as long as everybody else. So to say that just because they have atrial fibrillation, they will definitely develop a weak heart and go into congestive heart failure and die is not correct. Now, will atrial fibrillation shorten your life? Most of the time, no. True, if you have an underlying heart condition or your heart is very weak, it may not do as well long-term. Not only can you trigger congestive heart failure, as we mentioned, because your heart's going faster than normal in atrial fibrillation, but also when you have a weak heart that's not pumping blood very effectively and it's struggling, and now you make it even a little bit faster, that's gonna wear on your weak heart. And yes, could that cause you to die sooner and have your weak heart become worn out quicker? Absolutely, studies have definitely shown that if you have a weak underlying heart and you're in atrial fibrillation long-term, you do have higher mortality rates, even if your heart rates are relatively controlled. Because when you're in AFib, your heart rates are always faster than your normal rhythm would make them go at. And a weak heart really just doesn't like any stress. And so therefore, even if it's going a little bit faster over time, that does impact it. And yes, you could actually die sooner under those situations. The other condition where AFib could shorten your life would be if your heart rates are way too fast or extremely fast, not just any speed. Usually your heart rate would have to be over about 120 beats per minute and not just for a few hours and not just for a few days, but for multiple days at a time or even weeks at a time. So if your heart rate was 130, 140, 150 beats per minute, and even though your heart was completely normal strength, but your heart was just racing at that speed for days and days and days on end or weeks on end, that would be like you exercising at a rapid rate on a treadmill without a break for many days, many weeks, and that's just gonna wear on your heart. And so there is a condition called a tachycardic cardiomyopathy. This is a condition where you take a normal strength heart and put it into atrial fibrillation for days and weeks at a time at these very fast, uncontrolled rates. And over time, it can wear on the heart muscle and actually make the heart weak. So yes, if you are an AFib poorly controlled, poorly rate controlled, it can weaken your heart and it can damage it. And that could lead to you dying sooner. The good news is that if your heart was normal strength before you went into atrial fibrillation, and then the weakness was just due to the rapid rates in AFib, not because of some other problem like you had a blocked heart artery and a heart attack or something else like a virus attacked your heart and, and made it weak. If it was all just due to the rapid rates in atrial fibrillation, if we control those rates or get you back to normal rhythm where your heart rate is completely normal, usually within a few months, the weakness in the heart recovers. So that's usually not a permanent problem if treated appropriately. And so to say that just having atrial fibrillation will definitely weaken your heart and cause congestive heart failure is incorrect. And saying that having atrial fibrillation, even if it's rate controlled, will definitely kill you sooner 
That is also incorrect. For everything atrial fibrillation related, please feel free to go to my website, drscottlee.com, where you're gonna find more resources and also can follow me on social media.